Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, speakers, members of the public, officers. Um, welcome to this meeting of the Economy and Place Policy Development Committee, which is called for a pre decision calling discussion on a matter of Fosgate uh, public realm improvements. Um, I'm just going to deal with the formalities first. First of all, this meeting is being webcast, and so I'd ask members to behave accordingly. Uh, if members of the public or visitors want to leave the building, should there be a fire alarm, it will be for real. If it happens, please leave by the door, turn to your left as you leave the door, get out through reception, turn left, and assemble in front of the hotel. Um, so I hope that's clear to everybody. Um, facilities are, again, along the corridor to our left, to our right, sorry. It's a long time since I've been in this room. Um, I'm not going to say any more than that. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start by having any declarations of interest from members. Have we got any? No? Nope. nope. Okay, um, public participation then. Um, I've got several members uh, to speak. Uh, Councillor Crackhill is first on our list. And Councillor Crackhill? I'm sorry, I've got the. I'm sorry, I've got the wrong. I'm sorry, I've, I'm looking at the agenda and not the and not the list of public speakers. So it's Karen Froggett, please. Yeah, sorry, I got it. Yeah. Okay, thank you, um, Karen. You have three minutes, as before. So press the microphone button, and when you're ready to speak. Okay. So I have only become aware of this in the last week, so I've not had to been able to do as much consultation with my members as I would have liked. The first thing I want to ask is, has an equality impact assessment been done on this proposal? Um, and then there are a number of um, issues. Um, I represent the York Blind and Partially Sighted Society just over the road on Rougier Street and we've been consulted um, widely recently around um, changes to the front of the railway station, changes to Central York, um, lots of different consultations but we weren't made aware of, of the changes proposed to Fosgate so I'm not sure why that is but we weren't. So um, people who suffer from sight loss will struggle with certain elements of the proposal, i.e. narrow pavements. People with sight loss might need a sighted person to guide them, so we need a pavement that's wide enough for at least two people. People might need um, an assistance dog, a guide dog, so again we need pavements that are wide enough. Um, there's um, proposals to heighten curbs, there's bollards, there's all sorts of hazards that people with sight loss might, might struggle with. And in the past, when you've consulted with us, my members have been quite good at coming up with quite easy solutions to these issues. We're not saying you can't do it, but if you consult with us, we can come up with ways around it. So um, I was just disappointed to find that, that we, weren't, we weren't involved at a, an earlier stage, but I'm involved now, so I'm putting my points across. <laughs> so I think that's it, really. I think that's all I've got to say. Thank you, Karen. I think that the questions that you've just put will get a response, certainly in terms of what's in the papers for the meeting, and I think the officer will have a, an answer um, along the way. Okay. Our next person to speak, sorry, thank you, um, is June Tranmer. Oh, so, uh, June, sorry, if you press the mic button when, you, when you're ready to speak, on. and you've got three minutes, and Thank I'll you. give you a shout at 30 seconds to go. I can see the clock. It's All right. Fine. I'm, I'm going to try and keep really brief because I've already written in emails and I've been to a couple of consultations because I did manage to notice that the thing was going on, and I did try and notify lots of other people who I knew didn't know about it and I spoke to a lot of people around I, I run a business that's just around the corner 
from Falsegate, um, and I also am a member of the York Environment Forum. So I did send in um, a submission on our business behalf and my, my own personal opinions, and, and also the opinions of collectively the York Environment Forum, which were not completely consensual, as, as people who've done the consultation realize, there's a lot of different opinions out there about how best to manage this whole situation. But I'm just, I just wanted to have a last chance to say, please consider the bigger picture. It's not just a street. It's part of the bigger, a whole wider foot street ambition for the city centre. And it, it's, the time is right, right now, to really make a bold statement about how we're going to go forward. We have extra security measures going on. We have people wandering all over the street. Let's face it, they are doing it already. I go down there three times a week and I see people all over the street all the time. Um, I see people not managing to stay on the pavement. As Karen has just said, if there's two people walking beside each other, third person has to go around them into the street. There's the young women who run the Walmgate nursery. They trundle their little children in their big red trolley up there and down there, and they have to go in the street sometimes. Um, so yeah, and I, I'm not a fan of the bollards either. I think, I think they're a risk, a tripping risk, and I understand why they've been put there, but I just think something needs to be done about that. And the corner, at our corner, Merchant Gate, I think, please rethink putting that extra obstruction there. Because cars that are coming round to get into the flats underneath our place are going to have to swing way round and come back in. And it, it's just, it's really going to make it awkward. And I think it would just be better to leave that as it is. Save the money and put it more onto something else further up the street. Save the money on the, parliament, uh, the pavement street changes because I think that's irrelevant. That's not really, I, yeah, I know it's part of the whole bigger picture, but it's not necessary. So I think focus on changing the street to pedestrianization. Thank you. Thank you, June. Um, I'm sure your points will come up in subsequent debate, and it may not, depending on the outcome of tonight, be your last chance to loom. It could be your second to your last chance to loom. Okay. Um, I'm now going to call Sarah Lakin from the Fosgate Association. Welcome, Sarah. Um, when you're ready to speak, if you just press the mic button, and you've got three minutes, and I'll give you a shout at 30 seconds. Thank, Thank you. you. So I represent the uh, Fosgate Association, which is traders and residents on Fosgate. Uh, we actually set up after the floods was it 2014? I can't remember now. Uh, so it was all about getting people to come back to Fosgate after the floods, you know, York's still open, all of that. So it's very much our wish to see Fosgate pedestrianised. Uh, one of the reasons we set up the Fosgate Festival, which is a car-free day, um, one Sunday a month for five months over the summer, was to show everyone that you could pedestrianise the street, uh, still allow emergency access, and um, shop access or, or resident access uh, quite happily with people all sharing the same space and the sky didn't fall in. So that was good. Um, so broadly we do support the current proposals um, although typically members are saying they don't feel they go far enough in, in, towards full pedestrianisation. It still looks pretty much like a street, a standard street. Um, and also, no one is happy to spend any of what we see as our budget on pavement at the top. <laughs> um, so we do support the proposals and we're keen to see them happen as soon as possible. But with the proviso that this is not the end, this is perhaps there will be further chances to take forward uh, pedestrian uh, friendly proposals to make it more pedestrian dominant. Uh, to make it a safe street cafe friendly environment, lower pollution space and so on. All of our members agree we all need vehicular access at some point, <coughs> but we're all happy to limit this to see pedestrianisation happen. So broadly in favour, can you get on with it? Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Sarah. Um, and that's the end of the public participation. And we're going to move on now to 
uh, hear what the calling in member, Councillor Craghill, has to say. Um, following that, it will be Councillor Dew, and following that, it will be any relevant officers. Um, speakers are welcome to stay for the remainder of the meeting if they wish, or they can they can have a have a committee meeting fixed by watching it on the webcast later. All right, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Craghill, you're familiar with the procedure. You've got three minutes and I'll give you a shout in 30 seconds to go. Thank, Thank you, you. Chair. Um, the Green Group called this in because we believe it's important for the city that we get this right, both for Fosgate itself and as a model for future work on reducing the number of vehicles in our city centre shopping streets. The consultation responses in your paper make it very clear that there is widespread support for the notion that Fosgate is crying out to be pedestrianised and brought into the foot streets. Some progress has been made. We welcome the fact that point four of our call-in has now been partially addressed by recommending that the speed ta tables on pavement are not removed, as originally suggested, and that raised crossings are provided for pedestrians. We welcome the commitment at paragraph 22 to widen footways where possible on the street, specifically the narrow section between Lady Peckett's Yard and Pavement, and to raise the, raise the level of the road so that the drop from footway to road will be less than at present. We also welcome the proposal at paragraph 16 to pursue an option to investigate the full pedestrianisation of the street. However, we can't help agreeing with many of the consultation responses that this is still a missed opportunity, that it is timid, half-hearted, a poor compromise and half a job. All quotes from the responses. At present, the proposed pedestrian crossings on pavement are not located on pedestrian desire lines, and more could be done here to encourage footfall down Fosgate. The slight widening of the pavements and raising of the road level will be an improvement, but by retaining a central carriageway and allowing vehicle access at any time, the aspiration for a pedestrian priority street where people don't need to look over their shoulders for vehicles still isn't achieved, nor is the cafe culture many aspire to. The slight widening and addition of build-outs will enable some tables outside cafes whilst leaving the pavement clear, but these will be limited in number and customers will still be sitting immediately next to the fumes of passing vehicles. Since the recent consultation didn't actually propose full pedestrianisation, we agree with the points in the paper that proposals for this and other possible related changes, such as level surfaces or two-way traffic at the south end, would all require further consultation, including close work with disability groups, as, as we've heard. We're aware that timescales are now limited, thank you, and that work is programmed in for January and February, the quietest time for traders in the street, and that there are also financial concerns related to any further delay. Bearing all this mind, I've, in mind, I've already circulated by email a number of suggested recommendations that committee members might like, might like to consider putting forward to build on the current proposal and keep up the momentum. The number of speakers and contributions you've heard reflect the level of interest in the future of Fosgate. Let's do everything we can to get this right and help make a great little street into an even better one. And I have put copies of the suggestions on your table as well. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Craghill. Um, I'm going to invite committee members to put questions to Councillor Craghill. And I've got Councillor Richardson first. Thank you, Chair. Umic and the uh, people who have spoken tonight make a big point about people with disabilities. Mm. So, are you saying that you want to exclude people with disabilities who use vehicles to get to somewhere, given the fact that we're going to have an exclusion zone in the middle of York, and this is an area that will have to be looked at for people who are disabled, who have a right to go as close as they can to where they need to go in a vehicle to then walk however far or be pushed in a, in a wheelchair. 
So when you say people with disabilities, are you saying you want to exclude them because their vehicles are spewing masses of whatever out? Okay, so, so you're asking mainly about people with disabilities using their vehicles to, to get to shops or cafes on Fosgate. I mean, we already have a large number of foot streets in the city centre. So what I am suggesting is that in our vision of what might happen later on, we now hope, that the foot, that Fosgate would be subject to the same rules as other foot streets in the city centre. Now, obviously, there are a lot of stakeholders involved in this, and there are a lot of issues, and there are a lot of different needs that people, different people with different disabilities have. So you already heard Karen from the Blind and Partially Sighted Society talk about the need for wider pavements and more space uh, for people to be able to walk down Fosgate. You know, if there is a particular resident on Fosgate who has a particular need to get their car into Fosgate during Foot Street hours, I think that's something that in future we could look that very specifically we, we have that principle and we're going to have to deal with those sort of issues for the city centre security measures so I, I don't think there's any you know it's not a totally simple answer to that but um, I'm not trying to exclude anyone but if, if you know if we think that everyone can you know if, if we just have if, if, if somebody goes to an out-of-town shopping centre in a car they can't drive up to every shop we have to, we have to ask those questions and work with people like the Blind and Partially Sighted Society, as Karen said, they can often find ways forward if we work with them closely. But there are many others who are under the title of being disabled who have rights to be driven to a point where they can get out and then be taken shopping. It's not about just being well, in Fosgate. You made it, yeah, well, if they want to go to Fosgate. It's about being able to find an appropriate place where they can park, whether that's a resident or whether they wish to shop or purchase whatever within that area. You've said you want to welcome disabled, but now you're saying in the future, which is it? You either want them in the future, all of them, okay. or are you just trying to pick some of them? So, so in our preferred scenario in future, which might not be the one that turned out to happen after a, a wider consultation, but in, in what we're suggesting here where we might consider making one the south end of the street two-way, um, there could still be potentially disabled parking bays over the bridge in that area. Um, and only quite a short section of the street would be fully pedestrianised. So, that would actually facilitate people driving yeah. and parking so and, and needing to proceed to shop, them. you say, to shop, you know, over a relatively short distance. But it's not... OK, before this turns into a conversation, can I ask if other members have any questions? For Councillor Craighill. Councillor Stewart. Thanks, Chair. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of sympathy, actually, with all the sort of various points raised. Um, and... You know the whole thing about we're probably not going as far as we might, but that's obviously for further for down the line. Uh, just on point two of your um, suggested recommendations, when you talk about options to include the uh, the two-way bit from Franklin's Yard, um, and obviously you cite the fact that it might well address many of the concerns that small numbers of street residents have about pedestrianisation. Um, to what extent is that is that suggestion this two-way bit um, something where you sort of think well? those people persuaded rather than this or do you think the actual the two-way bit really does make a lot of sense maybe for disabled access I think that's a very fair question I think it I think it it does make sense it may not be the only way to do it but it does make sense because it it if that bit was two-way it would apply it could apply um, without the pedestrianisation of the top half and if the top half was pedestrianised during foot streets hours it would also obviously apply in the evenings in that um, people coming out from that end of the street where quite a number of people live in the flats next to Foss Bridge um, and also um, in the flats on Merchant Gate but which have their entrance on Foss Gate they wouldn't need to drive the whole length of the street to get out you know if it when it's one way 
at the moment, they have to turn left and drive the whole length of the street. They would be able to turn right and just get out, get out of the street that way. So I think it makes sense in, in that respect. And uh, it, it, it's, yeah. And, sorry, the other point is that um, if you pedestrianise the top part of the street, the south part gains much of what the top part gains because there's no through traffic during foot streets hours. So, so you take the through traffic out of the whole street. So you reduce traffic. Councillor Crum. Thank you, Chair. Um, also, in regards to the proposed two-way mm -hmm. system, um, you probably have read the officer's report, which says that there's actually not enough space in the Franklin Yards area for cars to turn around. How would mm. you overcome that? Um, I think we need to, obviously, well, it, it appears to us that even as it is at the moment, there is space for some vehicles to turn around there. But there is also an area of land on that corner um, that I think, I think we have, to, you know, if we take a positive approach to this, I think would be a good start. It might turn out, if we looked at it more closely, that, that, that it, it, it could be problematic. But I think that piece of land on the corner gives the potential to either negotiate a solution or find some other way of, of, of a solution for turning round. Um, and there is already, I think, an ordinary, I think cars could turn around there now at the moment. But we could provide a bit more space one way or another, perhaps tidy up that piece of land. That, that is not an attractive feature of the street at the moment. OK, thank you. Councillor Flinders. Thank you, Chair. Um, recommendation five that you've made is regarding the crossings uh, pavement. Could you just elaborate on, on that recommendation, please? Sorry. Yes, I suppose this one is um, something that I would personally suggest could be looked at now in the course of the current scheme, whether we could improve it um, a bit. Um, part of what was discussed all along about the reasoning for, for doing, the, part of the reasoning for doing this was to encourage footfall to come from Collier Gate and other parts of the centre down, down into Fosgate. And um, at the moment, the, the crossings are placed to one side or the other of, you know, and one of them, on, the one on Stone Bow, quite a distance away from the junction. Um, whereas if you, if you just stand or sit and watch what pedestrians actually want to do there, they want to go straight across. So I would just like to see us look more at... Um, at the options for improving pedestrian f flow um, across the junction on pavement, whether it's um, with um, separate crossings, whether it's with uh, colourful crossings, which is, is an idea that people are now promoting. For uh, I've seen some in various uh, places. I saw some in New Zealand when we were there. Um, it, to, to show that that area has a pedestrian priority. Um, so I think there are various options that we could look at to improve that, really. Thank you. Okay. We seem to have no more questions, so we'll move on then to ask Councillor Dew to, uh, to speak. Thank you, Councillor Craghill. Welcome, Councillor Dew. As usual, you have three minutes, and I'll give you a shout at 30 seconds. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I don't expect to take the full three minutes, uh, because I don't want to be accused of any pre-decisions. This comes to a decision session in 10 days' time, and what I would like to say is thank you to everybody who has responded. There are some very interesting comments in here, um, the comments also from Councillor Craghill um, and others are well worth taking note of. And I think um, you may have noticed that David in the corner there is, is busy making notes and I've asked James if we could have a meeting before the decision session just to go through everything that's been suggested um, to see uh, where we go next. Uh, Right, happy to take questions. Yep. That's it. Can I ask members who want to question Councillor Yu to remember that this is not the decision session? OK, 
Okay. Uh, I've got Councillor Flinders first, Councillor Richardson second, and Councillor Cram. Thank you, Chair. We've got a report in front of us that looks at various options, but the option that isn't considered is for pedestrianisation of Fosgate. Could you explain why that hasn't been considered? Now, I understand, obviously, that there is a decision to be taken and we're not discussing the decision, but could you explain why we're not even considering that as an option? Um, I suspect it's quite simply a matter of cost. I took the decision at the April uh, decision session to make the change in one way permanent and therefore I'm sorry to anybody who, who doesn't like the idea but uh, that's how it is. Uh, I don't disagree with the idea of making it a full foot street but I don't think the uh, capital or the resources are available at the moment. No, if it's, in the, if it's on the same topic, then yeah. please do, and then I'll take the other two members. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm just cu uh, wondering, I guess, if, if the decision not to include full pedestrianisation as an option is based on cost, um, is there a mechanism that enables you to consider uh, true cost, in, by which I mean some of the externalities in terms of potential for economic development associated with um, the decision? I'm sure there is. Does, uh, I think that... The officers are busy <laughs> discussing that already, but either of you want to comment? Je officers, perhaps you want to bear that in mind to come back when Councillor yeah, Dew's finished, right. because, sorry, um, there's a, I've got a slot for you at the after Councillor Dew's finished. Are you happy with that, Councillor Barnes? Yeah. 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 <laughs> You'll be able to ask yeah. the question again. Don't see why not, but uh, <laughs> yeah. okay, we'll go I've into got, it in detail. Yeah. Thank you. I've got councillors Richardson and then Cram. Um, yeah, thanks, Chair. Councillor Jew, you've heard the points about uh, two-way traffic at the uh, Merchant Gate end. Is the by officers' recommendations or anything that you've seen at this particular time? indicating that by the time uh, you've possibly moved the pavements to make them more accessible, because that's one of the complaints, uh, that there will be sufficient space somewhere on, along that section to turn around with the vehicle. As it stands, no, but as Councillor Craggles pointed out, there is an area of land. However, as I understand it, that is privately owned. And I think we're on to a, uh, some co completely different question as to whether anything could be done with that. Uh, yeah. But certainly, uh, in widening the pavement slightly, there isn't really the room to, to make, well, you might be able to do a five-point turn with a car, but it's going to be very difficult specifying which vehicles can go in and cart. Yeah. Now, the officer certainly uh, replied to that point but I'm um, not making a decision tonight and um, I'm sure that's something we can still talk about. Um, I don't know if you're aware of the layout at Chester, but Chester welcomes pedestrians and vehicles, unlike the city, which seems to be trying to separate them and make them enemies in some point. Have you seen any of the work at Chester where they've basically got rid of drop curbs and it's all flat and it's uh, available for parking during certain hours for disabled? It also has certain hours for collecting or delivering. But it works very well because the whole street is, is um, very well attended by visitors from all over, including myself. I'll declare an interest in that bit. Um, is that not something that could be considered on this? I visit a lot of places, and Chester's one of them, although I haven't been there for probably nearly a couple of years, but certainly that system was in operation at the time. Uh, I think we can learn a lot from other cities, but everywhere is unique. Chester, of course, has a dual carriageway, um, down the edge of the city and uh, taking in part of the city walls, I think. And I hope that we don't get that far. Uh, but given that it, it is a, an ancient city, an ancient Roman city that resembles this, this, this 
city of ours. Uh, it's not something that we would rule out. And just lastly, this build out on Merchant Gate, um, as pointed out, is there a, a reason why it goes so far? Because to me, that means that the buses are going to be forced out into what is actually buses, traffic coming past. I think it's Whereas to help. That's not very safe. I think it's to help pedestrians cross the road. Um, and looking at that area at the moment, and I do go down there fairly often, there isn't that much extra traffic around. The buses seem to get in and out without too much trouble. As it is. I think that's why the build out is there to make it easier for pedestrians to cross the road. All right, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Crown. Staying at this part of Fosgate, <laughs> so the, the crossing Merchant Gate, Warm Gate, Fosgate, you probably have seen Councillor Crackle's third recommendation um, that in order to facilitate the possible later implementation of um, the above options of the full pedestrianisation um, and avoid unnecessary expenditure, um, she would recommend not to implement this. And if I understood your answer to Councillor Flinders earlier, that you would still consider that full pedestrianisation could be an option, but at the moment we don't have the resources, wouldn't you then agree with that recommendation not to put money into work there, which later needs to be reverse because normally you're always for the value for money and not wasting money in things that you later need to take out again. I'm a Yorkshireman, Councillor Cram. I don't like spending money when I don't have to. Um, but again, that's something that we can discuss with officers. Um, strictly speaking, looking at the house numbers, I think from Fossbridge eastwards, that's actually part of Warngate, but um, that's nitpicking. Um, Yes, that's something we can talk about, it's whether it's necessary or not. Okay, Councillor Stewart, I think unless anybody's got a burning desire to ask, I think we'll call that it. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not a question, but just further to that point, really, that um, I do think, and I think when, when June made the point, I, I agreed with her, and my view would be if you're coming down Merchant Gate, you're going to go left down Fossgate, you, you're not... You know, slowing those vehicles in any way at all. You know, they still have a curved corner to go around, but I think they will just be going out too far into the street. And if you think about a pedestrian crossing the road, either crossing Fosgate or crossing Merchant Gate, there's not really any difficulties seeing across the area. So my view looking at it would be installing that would be cost and it would just mean more vehicles going further across the road. So I would just echo the concerns I think Councillor Richardson and Cram have made about that. Uh, yes. To be quick. There was the other point made in the officer's report that it would also perhaps dissuade people from turning into Fosgate when they're simply lost and don't know where they're going because once you've got in there you've got to go all the way up to the far end which is one of the objections that's been received from uh, the residents and businesses. Okay, from Councillor Richardson. Yeah, thank you. Um, one of the uh, speakers asked whether there had been a, an impact statement. Uh, has, oh, that was it, accessible statement. Have you, or have you seen one? Because there doesn't appear to be anything. Probably, if you can respond to that, best do it in the officer's comments the next item. Would that be OK? I think that's it. OK. We'll move on then to officer's comments in response to items that have been raised in the two different conversations. That we've had. Right. Thank you very Thank much, you. Councillor Dean. I'm introducing Mr Gilchrist with the, um, different, with the tie that's out of his shirt and Mr Mercer with the tie that's inside his jumper. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I could have said that. 
Um, that would be very political. You see, I, I, come, I come from the days of monochrome television, so things like that are very different. Um, could I ask before you uh, comment, please, uh, an area of land near to Falk uh, Franklin's yard has been mentioned, and I'm just wondering if you could locate that on the map uh, for us, please. It's that area, though, isn't it? I don't have that. It's the area that it says New Bollards. Yeah. Right, okay, so. On the plan at the back. I don't have New Bollards. I have Franklin's Yard with Ambiente Tapas immediately to the south of it, and then Franklin. Yeah. No, New Bollards is there. Yeah. I don't. I have an old Bollards version. So. The, um... Yeah, I see it. So it's that area. area. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you've got the old version of the plan, which is um, which is uh, what I've got in my papers, it's the. Oh, sorry, I wasn't aware. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just assumed they were the same. <laughs> okay. So it's on the on the on the map on the plan at the back of the pack, and it's the area immediately to the north of Franklin's Yard, and it's described as New Bollards. Okay, so that's one question. Um, I may be displaying, I may have missed something totally glaring here, but can I just check that the one-way system from Merchant Gate into, into Walton Gate is going to remain as it is? In other words, it's traffic moving eastwards along Merchant Gate and then southwards into Walton Gate, the bottom end of Walton Gate coming up to the junction by the St Dennis's Church where it splits. Okay. okay, thank you. Everybody happy with that? Yeah, fine, thanks. Officers, over to you. Okay, I think, um, just to deal with a couple of the issues that have been mentioned, I think the, um, the as you were mentioning, the area at Franklin's Yard, that is in private ownership. So, obviously, um, you know, I'm, I haven't done the design work on this, so I'll let Dave comment. Um, but I think you'd need an area of that to turn vehicles round if you wanted two-way traffic, because there's a danger traffic would go up there. Um, and even if you put some sort of restriction on the vehicles that can go up there, it would need somewhere to turn round. So you'd need some space there. Obviously, acquiring land puts the cost of the scheme up mm. quite significantly, uh, particularly in that location. Um, but that's, you know, it's not to preclude it uh, forever, but it's not something we've looked at. The primary purpose of this scheme was to do something following the decision about how the road should operate that was taken in uh, April this year, um, which followed the experimental uh, traffic regulation order that was approved in June 2017. Um, so this scheme is primarily in response, and the traffic layout is primarily based on that decision from June uh, sorry, from April uh, this year. So you're basing that on, on empirical evidence that you've already accumulated? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think the, the other thing I would just say about uh, pedestrianisation, and I don't think anyone is necessarily pedestrianisation, cannot happen or should not happen, but the, um, the a few pedestrianisation schemes, and Leicestershire is a good example, where it can end up in public inquiry if you get objections. So taking a measured, phased approach to reach a pedestrianisation is the right approach because actually that gives you the strongest defence if you end up in a public inquiry about why you've pedestrianised the street. So actually this approach of an experimental traffic regulation order, some changes to the street, and I'll let Dave comment, but I don't think any of these preclude uh, pedestrianisation in the future. So there's nothing here that you know says, oh, you can't pedestrianise it because. Um, and I'll let Dave comment on, on that. Um, so, you know, yeah, there's nothing to stop you pedestrianising now, but the risk of a public inquiry is much greater, whereas if you take this phased approach to build the case, then I think that's a, a logical approach. Okay, thank, you. thank you, Mr Gilchrist. Mr Murray. I think I would also add to, to James's comment that the, the, um, that the natural scheme as proposed actually allows for, for any of the... If, Vehicle moves through Fosgate at times when when various hours of pedestrian aren't in place. Uh, we actually recognise um, 
from previous discussions and previous correspondence, that's there are various businesses which, which, which do need real, do need regular access, and there are a number of actually private properties up there as well, such as pedestrian. Uh, various residents who live up the, the, the uh, top section as well. So, obviously, uh, actually closing it to vehicle traffic might actually exclude the likes of the, the various residents who live up there as well. Um, we do recognise that there's a strong wish to have it treated as a shared space. We haven't considered that. But firstly, because of previous feedback from, from from the various disability groups such as York Blind and Parsi Society, but also because there's a national directive not to actually introduce um, shared space treatments at the moment. Now, on subjects of actually um, contacting York Blind and Society, sorry, Blind, York Blind, York, York Partial Blind Society, we did actually contact them on a regular basis to us a series of emails, uh, and I even discussed it over the day of phone with them. So I was amazed that I didn't get any formal response off them. So th th the comment earlier on by Mrs Frogger was incorrect. We did actually actively engage with them. It's just that that's we didn't get any formal response. Can I ask about the qualities impact assessment, which is a point that have I... You were going to respond on that? Uh, that isn't something we've, we've actually done because um, so initially our scheme was to actually incorporate the um, natural road layout so that it meets everybody's needs and requirements. So we, we do recognise we still have a traffic, traffic road as such so with, with increased so footpath space, etc. And we also recognise that the the, the, uh, the actual needs of the residents and the various traders to actually accommodate the diverse activities which are planned out there as well. Um, so we haven't treated it as a pedestrianised area, the same as we haven't treated it as a shared space area. So on that basis, we haven't carried out any impact analysis or anything like that. Okay, Mr Gilchrist. I think just to say, as, we, as the scheme develops, so when we get to exec member approval, you see the level of detail you see here. Um, as we progress through the design process, you obviously go through further stages. So that will include things like a road safety audit, which will do detailed design. And that's where we'll bring in uh, a full equalities impact assessment to check those sorts of things as the design develops. Because as you can see, some of this is a bit, uh, it's lacking in some bits of, you know, we haven't identified which bollards we're going to move. It just says some will be moved, some will be retained. As we get to that level of detail about what we do and don't, that's when we'd need to do the the detail of the equalities impact assessment. And this slightly flexible approach is catered for within the experimental traffic order? Well, the experimental traffic order has come to an end now. All right. And in the, so the experimental traffic order went live from summer 2017 and it was made permanent in April this year at Council of Jews decision session to say this is how the road should operate, which was in effect to reverse the one-way traffic. Um, that's now made us a permanent change. So some of the discussions about how the road, road should operate almost go back to that decision, yep. if that makes sense. Yep, I understand. Okay. Okay. Um, do officers wish to make any more comments? Because otherwise I'm going to just invite members to ask questions. No? Okay. Councillors Richardson, Barnes and Flinders and Crown. Thank you, Chair. Um, you've heard me discuss the point about disabled parking. Given the fact that York is <coughs> in the process of um, putting a project forward that hopefully will keep the visitors of York <coughs> safe, but will actually um, exclude blue badge parking in a certain area, uh, part of that that discussion was about that there needs to be provision further away outside of the box so that we're not penalising them. Have you uh, considered <coughs> making the top half of Fosgate uh, so many disabled parking bays so that it can be properly enforced should the wardens or whoever 
decide to turn up. Secondly, that it is close to the various areas that they are being prevented or will be prevented from, rather than being put at the far end uh, near uh, Merchant Gate, which would not, that would still give them a fair distance to go, unless there is going to be a, uh, some sort of provision in Piccadilly that's identified as a, as a movement for this. Is that something that you are so, uh, considering? Um, the actual scheme, as, as shown in Annex C, um, it does cater for the likes of disabled badge holders. Uh, so it allows the servicing vehicles to unload and load. It also allows taxis to actually pull up and pick up and, and drop off. Um, and that's, that's basic by the, the fact I'm actually still retaining WL lines through there. I haven't purposely shown any, any marked disabled base because it's a bit of a balancing act between the various needs. Um, I should recognise there are a number of businesses out there which, which, which need to have servicing allowance. Um, so they need to have space to actually pull up and not block the, the, uh, the actual road off completely. So I've allowed, um, if you look at this section from Lady Peckett's up to the top, top end, mm. the road gradually narrows. That is largely to actually accommodate a minimum of 1.8 metre wide footpath, because we also recognise that the footpaths up there are very, very narrow. Now, that, that in itself has caused the, the very top section to, to be really narrowed down to, to around 3.1 metres with the carriageway. Now, it does gradually increase as you go back towards Lady Peckett's, and that, and that's, and that actually allows space for the lines of the disabled badge holders to actually park up there. But it also allows servicing vehicles to actually pull over as well. So there's, there's a balance to be struck between... Sorry? There's a balance to be struck between loading and blue badge holders, both of which can happen on double yellow lines. <coughs> yes. Yes, the badge does allow you that, but it's about designating areas so that we know where disabled badges can go. This is the point. Otherwise, we'll end up with blue badges all over the place, and then it's who's going to get it because they've decided to go somewhere near the top, which has happened before, and the road has been blocked. I'm concerned at the point that it's 3.1 metres wide. Have you actually spoken to the fire brigade to see what they would think when they have to come through there at 3.1? We have a number of issues within this city about very narrow streets. There have been fires and, and the actual makeup of the buildings down there make it that there has to be <coughs> good access to get in because of the fact that it would be very difficult. I mean, you're not going to get a platform through that. We actually recognise that that's, we need a bit of a balance here between having suitable footway widths and also still and still maintain enough carriageway width. We have physically done trials with the likes of large refuge vehicles to actually make sure that they can physically drive along there without any of their problems. And they're similar size to, 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 to the, the, the likes of fire engines. We did consult with, with, with the various emergency services and, that, and none of them actually gave any response. They didn't respond? None at all. So you've not actually, they've not responded as to whether their platform will actually get down there because this is the issue that with it being very narrow, the only way to get to a fire that's in the roof would be to use the platform to get up and get over as we witnessed at Haxby some months ago when uh, there was a I'm confident we have enough room for them. Okay, I'd like to move right. on to Councillor Barnes now, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, two questions, if I may. One is just to try and better understand some of what you were saying, James, about um, the, the kind of iterative approach to this and going through experimental traffic orders as, as, as you know, um, possibly the best way to do it in order to avoid public inquiry. So um, my question is whether or not uh, there's anything in guidance or regs that requires or suggests <laughs> that we take that approach um, and, and to breach that would leave us, you know, prone on a technical basis, um, or whether it's just a case of kind of uh, public relations and, and you know public engagement and, and 
you know, taking things slowly to keep people happy. Um, and then my follow-up to that, if I may, is, is uh, if we're to take that kind of risk mitigating approach and doing things slowly, what's the quickest feasibly that you think um, pedestrianisation of the type suggested by the Greens in this call-in could be achieved? I don't think there's anything that says we can't make a decision to pedestrianise. It's about risk management, managing a public inquiry situation, which could. If we say we're not going to do a scheme unless we pedestrianise, the decision to pedestrianise could lead to a public inquiry. You may end up sitting on a scheme for how long does a public inquiry take? It could take a year easily. Um, so I, I don't think I'm saying there's a technicality which means you, you can't. Um, I've forgotten the second part of your question, sorry. The second part was just really, if, if we were to take the kind of low risk, slowly, slowly yeah. approach, um, realistically, how long do you think we'd be looking out for a street like Fosgate to, to go down the kind of partial pedestrianisation that's, that's outlined in the amendment? I think um, Dave's report has indicated that we could report on pedestrianisation in the summer mm. next year. Um, in theory, there's very little work to do if we're just doing pedestrianisation, if we're turning two-way traffic and turning it, then, as I say, you need somewhere to turn it. That involves land acquisition. That's a, a different ball game, and that's where mm. Councillor Jew was right to raise the issue and concern about resources. Once that decision's made, in theory, it's just a case of going through the traffic regulation order change, which is something we do fairly regularly. So it's not a, a massive piece of work from that perspective. In essence, it's some sign changes and some adverts. <laughs> Flinders next, and then Councillor Crown. Uh, Thank you, Chair. I was going to ask a very similar to, a question to Councillor Barnes. I'd just like to understand, in terms of the physical infrastructure of the, the road, what would be the difference if a pedestrianisation scheme were to be considered? Would there be major changes or would it be very similar to the proposal that we've got in front of us? Um, so in essence, it would basically, it would basically stay as it's shown on the day I'm drawing. Um, <laughs> The only physical changes would would be largely signage. Um, the actual physical layout won't won't really change. And we might need additional bollards to actually stop stop vehicles driving through, but um, uh, substantially, it's very very little change. The only thing I would add to that is if if we decided that it needed to fit into a city centre security type position then that obviously significantly adds to the cost. So if I'm understanding this correctly, we're looking at a scheme where if pedestrianisation were included, we would have a very similar scheme or, or with some very slight changes. And we're talking in terms of delay, we're talking about doing this in a year's time as opposed to doing it in nine months. So it sounds like um, considering the option of pedestrianisation is not going to add significant costs, nor is it going to add a significant time scale if it were to be considered now. Is that correct? Yes, I think. I think. Yes. So, so. Just to, just to clarify, I meant in terms of actually achieving a pedestrianised street. So, in terms of achievement of pedestrianised street, you can make the decision now and risk a public inquiry, or you could make the decision in six months' time, and the, there's still a risk of a public inquiry, but the risk is much lower because you've been through this incremental approach to achieving what you want to achieve. Could you just explain why there would be a risk of a public inquiry if the decision were taken now, but not if on, on an almost identical scheme, the same decision were taken, say, next summer? It's, it's to do with the evidence base we've got. We haven't consulted on pedestrianisation, so we haven't consulted on it. If we go out to, if you make a decision now, or if Councillor Jew makes a decision on the 15th that actually I want this, it's not something that the authority has consulted on or asked the public specifically about. Therefore, some of the statutory consultees could come back and go, no, I don't think this is the right thing to do, in which case we could very quickly end up in a public inquiry. That's why I'm saying 
my instinct is deliver the scheme. Pedestrianisation has come out through this by developing this scheme to say this is something we want to support. You could be saying at the decision session on the 15th, we want officers to explore pedestrianisation as the next step once the scheme is built, because very little of the scheme is going to change as a result. The risk of a public inquiry is that you'd have the consultation there <coughs> to say, actually, we've consulted on it and it's the right thing to do. At the moment, you wouldn't have that. Councillor Crum. Maybe directly, in, but wouldn't we learn more if we're already using an experimental traffic order for full pedestrian? for that area rather than going through the phased approach and if I remember right for experimental traffic orders we don't need the consultation at that point just if we want to make it then permanently you, so we've, we've had the permanent order in place for four months I think to change it straight away into another experiment does smack of not knowing what to do a little bit but it seems quite obvious that we know what we want to do because so far the, the Traders and Residents Association, you as the officer, are always saying the end game that we're aiming for is full pedestrianisation. It's just the question which road to take. And I might sound like a Tory here, but um, putting money in the ground um, just for the sake of it to um, later take it out again to prove a case sounds for me like quite a waste of public money on that I, one. I don't think we're talking about taking anything out for pedestrianisation, that's what I've said. But again, to do an experimental traffic regulation order based on no consultation about pedestrianisation doesn't feel like a sensible choice. That's why the recommendation that Dave's written is build the thing, start the consultation on pedestrianisation, we can report on that in the summer, you will have the strength of going to the public and all the statutory consultees saying pedestrianisation, tick or not, then you can do the experimental traffic regulation order. You don't have, or Councillor Jew doesn't have, the public response. It, we haven't asked the question of the public, do you want it pedestrianised? Can, can I just also come in, Chair, yeah. say that people live down there? So this is the vehicular access that they've enjoyed with their properties. Since those properties exist, we've been removing that. What hours would the pedestrianisation operate? We haven't got any evidence in the, around that. And those businesses have already made the comment that they need to have vehicles to service them. So again, the operating hours of the pedestrianisation would need to, to be consulted upon. So I, I think I would entirely support James's view there that if you were to move to pedestrianisation now, we would need a stronger evidence base for the executive member to make that decision. Also, I would suggest that we need to understand what the risks of the, the public inquiry were and fully explain those within the report. Um, I think where we're at at the moment, uh, we're looking at potentially implementing a scheme in January that will be um, effectively, when you, if you were to move to a pedestrianisation, it wouldn't be 24-7 because obviously there's still the servicing issues. So the actual scheme that's proposed when operating with vehicles outside the pedestrian hours would be an appropriate safe scheme and as officers have said they wouldn't recommend any changes during pedestrian hours anyway so again it's not it's not that there's any significant loss of, of, of capital that you've sunk into the, into the street into, into the street infrastructure so there's okay. nothing of these building measures that would later be in need of reversing if we're going for full pedestrianization there's only one uh, potential piece of work which, which, which is a jeopardy, and that has the day build out to the bottom merchant gates, as we mentioned earlier on. If we went down, down the line, lines of actually making the bottom section a two way traffic, we, if we then actually have already built the build out, we might need, need to, to then take it out again. So obviously, there's a choice whether to actually implement the works at the, the, uh, the one gate junction or not at this stage. Uh, that that, that two-way traffic at the bottom there, if you look at that, because that would require private planning. Mm -hmm. Obviously, to the extent that we can get an agreement by, uh, by agreement, as it were, with the 
land and get a reasonable price, bearing in mind how expensive and how we could affect the landscape street, we have to go down compulsory all the route. So, so for the bottom of Fosgate Merchant Gate, can we not just paint it then instead of build it, so that it's easier to reverse later when we don't need it anymore? It, it can be done in several ways. Uh, we can make it as a temporary curb arrangement where, where curbs are actually bolted down rather than actually physically built in. Or we can actually mark it out in road markings. Um, or as you were say, saying, we can build it properly and then it, end up taking it out. So, yeah, yes, it can be done as a temporary measure. So it could be done as a permanent at risk or actually to, to do it as, as road markings. There are, very, there are various ways of doing it. Okay, I've got Councillor Richardson for a very quick one, Councillor Stewart and then Councillor Barnes. And I think we take the point that the issue about the build-out on the east end of Merchant Gate could be tackled in a number of ways. And I'm sure you'll be thinking about that before the decision session, Mr Mercer. Okay, Councillor Richardson for a quick one. Thank you. Just to clarify from my colleague at the right of me, all the new paths, I was a new paths, will not be dug up if it was pedestrianised because the pedestrianised section that would be changed would be actually the road itself, not the paths or anything else. Is that correct? There are no, no physical changes at all. Thank you. So, Other than the potential change in signage. The costs of the changing of the corner would be negligible on a, on a scheme like this. It's just like a day's bit of work and stuff. It depends how we work depends how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's yeah. paint or whether yeah. it's built. Yeah, but it, it's not going to make a major change to the no. bill and everything else. Thank you. I've got Councillor Stewart and Councillor Barnes. Councillor Cram wants to come up with a quick one, and I think that's going to be it then. I look forward to seeing them build this in a day on the end here. But... Um, I'm sure, I mean, standards of efficiency and, you know, you know probably, probably less than a day. Um, my question relates to the, um, the sort of the top of the Fosgate um, junction, and it, it probably relates to what you said earlier, David, about the fact that there's been this directive about we can't have shared spaces. Um, so two questions, really. One is, um, why has the government issued that directive? It doesn't, there seems to be a cap counter to the, the sort of general mood and obviously the government is normally very sensible and popular so why would they do something like that and and so the second one related to that is um i'm trying to think what markings there are at the top of fosgate at the moment and i'm, I'm thinking that there's less than there are now so if, the, if that is the case and we're putting more markings in do we absolutely have to do that based on the you can't put more shared space in because with all these markings, it would suggest, I, I would think, that that makes it look a lot more like a normal junction than a sort of area where if you had less markings, you would be going slower. I do just do the shared services piece. Uh, there was a, a move within the, should we say, the transport uh, sector and transport professionals to re start to remove and declutter roads. And uh, one of those was pedestrian crossings with the idea that you created a shared space and therefore... Uh, people would slow down and take account of the fact that people were were, were um, moving around the streets and therefore that would encourage motorists to drive more slowly. As was pointed out um, by a number of MPs and certainly the issue was raised on a number of occasions in the House of Lords, we effectively start to use blind and partially sighted peoples uh, as a means of slowing down traffic. Uh, because effectively it relies on eye contact between the pedestrian and the, and the road user. And this was all discussed very, like I said, with great concern in the, in the House. And on the back of that, uh, the DFT effectively have issued this general position that we shouldn't be using pedestrians as a means of slowing down vehicles. And therefore, roads should be designed in such a way uh, as as, previously, as previous guidance, where it puts infrastructure in place to protect and separate vehicles and uh, pedestrians. 
Okay. Um, so in terms of that road markings at the top of Fosgate, um, what I was trying to actually emphasise, uh, the fact is that, that certain vehicles do have to actually give way. And so it's mainly because traffic priorities are, is actually a long pavement. Um, it, it might be a bit OTT, as shown. Um, we, I'll say at, at minimum, we do need to have the actual double dotted give, give way marking, uh, but we could probably do away with the, with the, the large triangle. Sorry, as James has said, that, that d decision to remove would obviously come back through the safety audit process, so we just have to <laughs> confirm that through the safety audit process. Yes, yeah, so, sorry, yes. I've got <laughs> Councillor Barnes now. Thanks, Chair. Um, just to take us back, there was a question I asked the exec member, uh, which was about um, you know, why pedestrianisation wasn't included as an option within the original consultation. Uh, and in fact, mine was the supplementary um, about considering the potential benefits and externalities. Um, in terms of what officers have said, it sounds like there's no significant capital increase other than maybe the acquisition of the, of the turning space uh, near Franklin Yard. Um, so I take that as a, as a maybe that was the reason it, pedestrianisation wasn't included as an option within the original consultation. You might want to uh, clarify if, if that's not why. Um, so then my question is, are we working in silos where we say there's a high capital cost so we don't want to include that as an option or we don't, we don't want to do it? Or are you speaking with colleagues in economic development and the like to ensure that you know, we're taking a, a, a holistic view and saying what could the potential upsides be of, of pedestrianisation? I'd, I'd come back to the decision in April, which was actually this is how we want the traffic to flow. The scheme has been designed around that decision, which said we want to reverse the one-way traffic. It wasn't a decision then to pedestrianise, therefore we've consulted on the way the traffic was designed to flow in that uh, April 2018 report. Not consult on something that's counter to that. It was supposed to be. There's a, a scheme to deliver here. Now we've decided how the traffic will flow. Let's go out and consult on that. Through the consultation process, we've become aware of this. So we've tried to make sure that our design is built for but not with, as the Navy would say. So it, it hasn't necessarily got pedestrianisation, but it doesn't preclude it in the future. And I'll just add to James's point, because I was uh, in James's role back in uh, January 2015 when this was previously considered. And one of the most controversial aspects of this was the proposals to pedestrianise Fosgate at that time. There was a, a, particularly those residents mm -hmm. who actually lived on, on the street and the businesses who wanted to look at the access arrangements. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, the, there was a lot of people supported at the time, but there was also quite mm -hmm. some vociferous voices against pedestrianisation. So the approach that's been taken, as James has said, is effectively to invest, work on the basis of let's invest in the street, let's enhance the, the setting and the environment, the economic opportunities for the street and then to the extent that the community at large and the city and members ultimately want to then pursue pedestrianisation we can do so at a later <coughs> Okay and Councillor Crown for a quick one <clears throat> So it's my understanding that the general principles of um, traffic <coughs> orders which means access only when you go through and the double yellow lines um, as they are currently stay in place as it's currently. So is the question from your expert opinion that's currently working, that we just have excess traffic there and that people parking on the yellow de uh, double yellow lines in a way that they're not obstructing um, through traffic? The purpose of the experimental traffic regulation order was to test that. Uh, we ran a consultation to ask people, uh, businesses and residents, whether they thought that was a better way for the street to operate than the reverse flow. And the response was supportive that actually it was an improvement to how it had operated previously. And hence the decision was made in April, 27, uh, April 2018. That was not really my question. My question was, do we think that the access only order is currently working so that we don't have people just <coughs> driving through and do we think that the parking and unloading on the double yellow line particularly in the narrow bit on top is working so that there's no obstruction there is no access only i don't sorry i'm 
It's um, actually <coughs> it's actually classed as potentially psychosome, except for access. Right. And it's during certain times of the day. Because I know I'm not scratching my short question, but um, when I was there last week, I saw the access only signs, but I also anecdotal evidence in the hour I spent there, I saw at least 10 cars, mainly delivery um, vehicles by um, DPD, um, just driving through, not stopping at all um, on, on that street. And there was also the accident, uh, the incident on the top that there was a de uh, delivery vehicle parking on the double yellow lines and another one needed to mount the pavement to get through. That is not a scientific thing, but me spending there an hour and already seeing several incidents um, might already indicate that the arrangements we currently have in place and planning to continue to have in place are just not working. But as, as I say, I think it is a, a vast improvement on the amount of traffic that was flowing through it previously. So when it was running the other way, it really was used as a rat run out of the city, and that has... That has stopped in the main. Can we just clarify this? Has there been any notification of the kind of incident that Councillor Crams just uh, reported that you're aware of since the changeover was made? I think it does occur. Um, the actual restrictions which are in place actually need enforcing. Um, they, the signage which is currently in place is not very visible. and. And the diverse measures we are proposing will actually improve that because we are actually putting them in, in full view of, of most of this approaching. So it will hopefully enforce it more. Um, the um, fact we are actually making alterations will hopefully dissuade vehicles parking inconsiderately. Um, but we also recognise that there is a genuine need for for vehicles such as being Foscate. James is quite, quite right that the, the amount of through traffic has, has actually reduced very, very considerably, and that in itself has been a massive improvement and is recognised by, the, by the, the people of Foscate as well. So the actual trial experiment has actually worked very well. It hasn't been 100% I mean, successful, um, but without full enforcement, it never will be. Okay. Um, unless officers have got any last... The, the only two points I'd make, just quickly, one of which, of course... Two comments quickly. One of which is um, vehicles passing through is a moving traffic offence, not something we have enforced, just because I was feeling guilty about it anyway. But the, the crossings were mentioned on the top of pavement, and are they in the right location. If you look at where, you obviously can't have a crossing at a road entrance, um, they're as close as they can be to Fosgate. Um, otherwise you'd be encouraging people to actually cross whilst in the traffic at outside pedestrian hours. Okay. Um, well, we don't want to encourage the... people to cross there. Okay. We'll keep the debate within the table space, please. And... Okay. Can I add to that comment, please? Um, the um, crossings are actually aimed for the blind and partially sight or visually impaired people, uh, that, hence the actual use of tactile paving. Um, Able-bodied people are allowed to actually cross in any place and they want to, as long as it's safe to actually do so. So that, the fact we've actually placed the crossings approximately where that they go. That there at the moment is actually giving the, the, um, the people who are less able a safe place to actually cross. Okay. Um, we're also widening the crossings as well to actually give them more space. And as we mentioned previously, we are actually uh, putting the crossings on raised tables as well to actually help keep, keep traffic speeds down as well. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mercer. Thank you, Mr. Gilchrist. And going to set the matter into debate now and uh, members wish to speak let's councillor richardson and then councillor flinders thank you chair uh, just like to thank everybody who has, who has had an input this evening um, clearly there are benefits for this scheme 
and uh, to improve the path must be one of the best things since sliced bed down there because it's it's terrible you end up falling off there's no way you can walk down there or be taken down with a wheelchair because you end up falling off half the time however um, as we've been advised by officers to just go directly to a pedestrianised uh, scheme I can see the dangers particularly the fact that if we don't do things right we end up with the bill because anybody within there that that's, uh, lives there could actually challenge what goes on and if we lose we end up with the bill and, and plus the cost of whatever it is to put back whatever so I, I think we have to do this in stages so that we're safe that everybody around that area has the ability to input what they feel, what they think, what the design is, etc., for the future. And uh, some of the, the points that we've raised do really need following up. I'm concerned about the fact that uh, there's been no response from the fire brigade. Uh, As, as vice chair, I could follow it up and say what's going on, but uh, the chair may wish to do that, or one of the officers, to find out why they've, they've failed to properly address what is a, a very important area, uh, particularly to do with the platform. Uh, we really do need the platform, and as we've seen recently, the platform's been out in, London, uh, in York, and then he said London then uh, and it had to be used near Barnets to get over the top this is the same issue but this is probably just as narrow if not narrower in certain places so uh, I'm happy for it to go along as it is to the executive member but not as a proposal of full pedestrianisation OK Councillor Flinders Thank you, Chair. I think it's important to start with the positives about this scheme. So I'd like to thank officers for the work that they've done. And I think that the scheme we have in front of us is certainly an improvement on the Fosgate that we have today, particularly the crossings at pavement and also improving the width of the pavements on Fosgate itself. Now, the executive has set itself two priorities which are applicable to this scheme, one of which is a prosperous city for all, and the other is a council that listens to residents. It's important that we focus on what will grow the fantastic businesses on Fosgate and what will make Fosgate a street that residents are proud of and that serves their needs, both residents of Fosgate itself and residents who live in the wider Warmgate area. Now, when we've spoken with businesses and residents, they've told us overwhelmingly that they want a scheme that includes pedestrianisation. Now, I appreciate that pedestrianisation is not the decision we're taking tonight. What we're considering is whether that should be one of the options that we put to the executive member, and then the executive member takes a decision based on the, the available evidence that, that is in front of him. Now, we talked earlier about the experimental traffic order and the feedback that we got when, when that was consulted upon. But we asked people about one particular option, which was reversing the flow of traffic on Fosgate. We didn't ask them at all about pedestrianisation. That was what ward councillors asked for at the time. That was what residents asked for at the time. And that was what businesses asked for at the time. But that wasn't an option put um, forward. Now, we have a situation where we've um, started in, in a particular direction. We've made a decision regarding uh, reversing the flow of traffic on uh, Fosgate. But it's important that we pause and look at the scheme in front of us and look and we can, if we can improve it. Now, I appreciate we're never going to get 100% support for any change of use of any street in our city. But we have to listen to residents and we have to listen to businesses. And there is a significant number of them who do want pedestrianisation. So I think it is important that one of the options put in front of Councillor Jew is to consider pedestrianisation. So I'd like to support um, recommendation one made by Councillor uh, Craghill. I also have listened to officers and I understand the reasons that they are reluctant to uh, consult on making the lower part of Fosgate uh, two-way and I also understand the reasons that they think that the scheme in terms of pavement is sufficient and I, I've listened to that feedback and I understand it and appreciate it. So I'd like to propose that we recommend to the executive member um, that full pedestrianisation is one of the options that is considered in his report. Okay, thank you, Councillor Flinders. 
Councillor Barnes. Nobody else, Chair. Thank you. Um, <coughs> sorry. We... I, I just see here a pattern, Chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the empirical evidence over a period of yeah, time. Just because, because Councillor Richardson said I'm to his right now, it doesn't mean that I don't deserve the attention of the Chair anymore. Okay. Um, I, I do think we have a, a general um, agreement around the table from what I heard from the different comments um, there. And I also do think that the suggestions from Councillor Crackle are not that radical, because in a lot of um, um, cases, we're asking for bringing further options or investigate, um, looking further, getting more information. And if we heard from the um, executive member and if we heard um, from the officers that the mid-term solution of a full pedestrianisation is already on the horizon, I think not incurring um, unnecessary expenditure and already planning in that direction and consulting as soon as possible, um, I think is not unreasonable. So, and, um, so I would support Councillor Flinders in, in moving um, the recommendation to include already the plans for the, um, the full pedestrianisation. And I don't see any reasons actually to move all five recommendations, but I'm open for suggestions here. <laughs> Sorry, were you moving recommendation one? Yes, Chair. And your seconding recommendation one. Bef before we proceed to vote on that, I'd like just everybody around the table to have their two pennyworth on the grounds that Councillor Richardson's already established a position in a slight, of a slightly different kind. So if Councillor Stewart, and, well, Barnes to speak now, and then Councillor Stewart and, Cram <coughs> and uh, Colwick would, would like to speak, I'd be grateful. Thanks, Chair. Um, I mean, I, I would support the recommendation um, to send uh, recommendation one, certainly, um, to the exec member. Um, for me, I, I don't think, to, to move away from the technicalities, I appreciate everything that officers have said, and I think, um, given the brief that officers were set, uh, that the job is sound. Um, but for me, the brief was never ambitious enough and didn't recognise uh, the desires of ward councillors, businesses and, and residents I in the area. Um, I, and I think, you know, if ever there was a, a clear-cut case for a street within York which is, is absolutely crying out to be pedestrianised, surely Fosgate is it. Um, I've never seen such a, a kind of, you know, conclusive set of comments in, in terms of public consultation feedback. Uh, and, and I don't think we've heard from anybody who is um, vociferously objective to, to the proposal. Yes, there'll be one or two residents, but there will be always on any street. And to, to, um, to say that they should be a barrier to stopping pedestrianisation is to say that pedestrianisation shouldn't happen, um, which I think would be a crying shame. I appreciate the need to take things slowly and to... Um, to recognise all of the risks inherent, but I think you know if a, if a plan is sound and it's consulted on soundly, um, that shouldn't be reason to, to uh, go unnecessarily slowly. So, fully supportive. If not here, then where on earth are we going to start pedestrianising the city centre? Okay. Do either of Councillor Stewart and Colwick wish to say something? Thank you. Yeah, I've kept pretty quiet up until now. I was certainly confused during the course of the conversation that right at the beginning we were informed by the executive member that the reason that full pedestrianisation was not on the agenda was because of the expense, when it seemed to become clearer through the conversation that really isn't a great deal of additional expense, but rather that it really just hadn't been included at a sufficiently early stage, and therefore um, we would be backtracking in order to, um, to, to do that and to have adequate consultation on that option. So clearly anything that can be done in the process to... Um, minimise expenditure so there's not unnecessary uh, duplication uh, and waste of expense in, in the works, when it would seem pretty clear to everybody that the direction of travel with this is towards um, a greater scope of pedestrianisation uh, during set hours at some future point. We simply need to make sure there is the, the proper consultation through that process, uh, rather than leaving ourselves open to um, um, other actions. And so I would certainly support what has been proposed and seconded. Councillor Stewart. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, 
Councillor Barnes said, if not here, then where? And I think we, we probably are ultimately going to go for here. It's just sort of when. Um, now, from my point of view, I mean, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to support what Councillor Flinders says. I mean, I think probably Fosgate will be pedestrianised at some point, whether it's a year or a, a few weeks away. And so there's probably more mileage in us focusing on the rest of, of Councillor Craghill's um, recommendations, and instead, I do think the recommendations make rather more sense than the uh, the sort of call, the calling reasons are a bit different. But I think you know that broadly sort of sensible. Um, the only sort of thoughts I would have is how much it's sort of this committee rising up and saying we must look at full pedestrianisation now, and then obviously three officers have sensibly told us why that risks a public inquiry and that sort of thing. So how much the committee will say look at it now, and then the officer report comes in and says, well, actually, we accept the sort of long-term direction of travel, but really we need to do the staged approach and that sort of thing. So we may ultimately be write, asking the officers to write a report saying why this shouldn't be done, and I, I'm putting in on paper the reasons they've given at this meeting. However, I think it makes sense for them to do that, because when it's, when it's looked at further, as it probably should have been looked at um, long ago when the remit was done... Um, it might be something that they do go with. So I, I don't see us losing anything by by throwing that option in there because it is ultimately only for Councillor Jew to be uh, loved or loathed based on what he decides. <laughs> so, what's new there? Yeah. Okay, well, I'd, I'd like to have my two pennyworth um, on this because I do actually think the scheme that's been proposed has got a lot going for it. Um, Um, two things uh, worry me about the idea of um, two-way working at the south end of Fosgate, and that's the need for a space to turn around um, uh, in the land to the north of, of Franklin's Yard. That, to me, would involve what, uh, looking at the size of this, would probably not allow a vehicle of any length to make a single turn. It would be a turn in the road using forward and reverse gears as it used to be in the driving test when I took it all those decades ago. Um, and I just think that that... Pardon? No, no, it's, no, it's, it's, quite, it's described as something different these days. Um, it, it still means the same thing, I think. Um, and I think that returning this to two-way working is fundamentally dangerous. We've tried, I say we, but you know, you get the feeling that this scheme tries to minimise the risk to both pedestrians, sighted pedestrians, partially sighted pedestrians, um, and, and other road users uh, by having one-way uh, traffic where there's quite clearly a number of obstacles to progress, which one would think that the average motorist would be, be careful of. So I'm, I'm, I'm not inclined to support a move to uh, dual, work, dual um, work, the south end of Fosgate. Um, Pedestrianisation, I do feel, is something that we should uh, move towards and I think should be considered, but it should be quite clear from what officers have already said tonight that pedestrianisation is already at the back of their heads. But I'm amazed at the appetite for risk, for risk of some members here. Um, if you were managing this project, I would, be, I would be sitting back here and saying, well, we'll catch this monkey particularly slowly this, this time, bearing in mind that this work is already it, it's scheduled for as soon as it can possibly be done. You're talking about a consultation over the summer, revised traffic order or whatever's necessary can be put in hand. I think to, to, to say that this must happen as soon as possible rather than waiting for next summer, that gives it what, perhaps March and April. But hang on, there's an election in the way there, so that might be a bit difficult. So we would, um, from my point of view, I would prefer to see this if a decision to pedestrianise cannot be taken at this moment. The officers have given reasons why not, but if it can't be taken at this moment, it should be considered during the decision session and that the implementation should be scheduled to occur as soon as possible after a consultation can be done. And that, that I don't mean starting in February. So um, that's my view of this. So I would be inclined 
if you would accept the amendment to your proposal to go down that route in terms of recommendation one. I'm, I'm happy to accept deleting between alongside and February. So it would read that the executive member actively supports the proposal at paragraph 16 to investigate the full pedestrianisation of the street during Foot Street hours, but that this happens as soon as possible rather than waiting for next summer. This should include a proactive consultation involving traders and residents okay. in the street, as well as disability groups and the wider public who use and value the street. Okay. I, 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 all, I can, all I can say to you is I would guess that from the officer's point of view, it would be difficult to start it once Perda's in motion. So, I mean, um, I've, I've, Councillor Cramer and Councillor Richardson, I'm proposing this as an amendment which the proposer has accepted. My question just was if the chair is also proposing not to look into the two way system for the south because I don't completely understand how the pedestrian of the northern bit would work if there's no two way system in the south. So isn't that going hand in hand when we supporting now the recommendation to look into the pedestrianisation? Councillor Flinders, you've got a response to that? Just to be clear, if rec recommendation <coughs> one is passed, then officers would consider how to implement pedestrianisation. Okay. If there were schemes such as that, then they would, con it they would consider that in the recommendations made to the executive member. But I don't want us to recommend one particular option. I think that they should look at the best way to do pedestrianisation. Councillor Crum. Can I just um, suggest an amendment to that recommendation to also include the spirit of recommendation three to say that um, if we're looking into the full pedestrianisation that we're not incurring any unnecessary cost and maybe looking at di uh, different options how the um, management regarding wall gate, merchant gate and foss gate can be achieved. I don't Councillor Cram, I fear you're fast becoming a naturalised Yorkshireman. Yeah. <laughs> but I do think there will, there will always be some, some wasted expenditure if you move towards pedestrianisation or even a change of uh, working at the south end of, of, of Fosgate. Um, I don't think you can just say minimise waste of expenditure. You're suggesting that there shouldn't be any, which, you know, seems a bit hopeful to me. So, Councillor Stewart. Says minimising it. Uh, sorry, I've got Councillor Richardson after... Yeah, thanks. Just on that point, I, mean, I think, you know, my concern about the, um, the bit sticking out Merchant Gate, Fosgate, is it it doesn't add a great deal anyway. So Councillor Cram obviously has argued the point about why we might be taking that out and therefore the waste of money if we take it out. My view would be that even if we, if there was no cost to taking it out, no cost to changing it, I don't think it adds a great deal. And you know, so I made my comments earlier about swinging round, driving round. It's, it doesn't, it just means more vehicles cutting across. Um, it doesn't make it any easier to cross the road. You know, so I, I don't think it adds a great deal personally anyway. So I'll just, um, urge the executive member to look at that cautiously on the benefits or look at the officers you know, to maybe consider that again. Yeah, Mr Mercer's already suggested that it could be done in a, but with, but with lots of white paint or yellow paint or whatever, I think. Yeah. Yeah, cheaply. <laughs> OK, Councillor Richardson briefly. Uh, Councillor Barnes, do you want to... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to come back on a few things that's been said, really. This overwhelming response is 50. And a number of the responses have been duplicated. So it isn't a mass walkover as, as being a pedestrian area. The other point you made, that there wasn't a pedestrian area in your there is Parliament. It's been there for some time. And there are other areas. There are other areas. Now... If we're to go and spend loads of money, I would hope that it would be based on far more of a consultation, because it isn't just those people who have shops there. There are people who often go through there, walk through there, etc. They may have their own opinions about what they would like to see. So I'm amazed that 
those at the other side of the table, <clears throat> have not said, well, we need to do more to find out what people want before going down. Before going down a road to say that you want it, whichever way, there's a case for this. That's the point you're making, which isn't. Although you come to this with the request of the chair, it wasn't your own making in the first place. What are you looking ahead for? So just, just to be clear, Chair, I was very clear that this recommendation came from Councillor Craghill. Um, it does include a proactive consultation involving trades and residents, and I think that would be a very positive thing. I think it's important that we have a thorough consultation, which includes pedestrianisation as an option. In which area? But, that, I, I, but that's the point. This is where we're going back to. Foscate it needs to go wider than just Fosgate, which is the point. We are, talking, we are talking exclusively about Fosgate in this evening's discussion and the decision that the member, the executive member is going to make about Fosgate on the uh, 15th of November, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, um, I, I was going to say, as long as officers are happy with the proposal... Thanks, Chair. Um, just, I guess, final comment. I, I accept the, the, the thoughts that have been shared about risk, um, and I guess just to highlight that this sits within a broader context and that obviously the flip side of risk is reward, and we seem to be considering this um, very much in a silo with, with a transport hat on. Um, and, and it just it strikes me as a failure to consider the you know, the potential upsides and rewards, which could be, you know, we, we all hear about high streets in crisis. Now, this isn't quite a high street, but it's certainly an area that would benefit enormously, according to, you know, the traders and the ward councillors, um, from pedestrianisation. So I'd just like to sow that seed and make sure we're not uh, just considering risk, but we're also thinking about potential reward. I know if you sow two or three seeds in the same spot, there's much better chance of germination in the end. Okay, Councillor Flynn, can we just clarify what we're, what we're, what we're proposing? Um, it's a recommendation one. Yes, so it's um, an edited recommendation one that right. the executive member actively supports a proposal at paragraph 16 to investigate the full pedestrianisation of the street during foot street hours, but that this happens as soon as possible yep. rather than waiting for next summer. Yep. <clears throat> this should include a proactive consultation involving trades and residents in the street as well as disability groups and the wider public who use and value the street. Right, okay. And you wanted to mention... Did you, did you want to include... The, the two-way working, or...? So, the, the proposal that I put forward is to su support recommendation one. If yeah. other members of the committee wish to propose additional recommendations, I think we should vote on this one first and then perhaps come to those later. OK. So can we take a vote on that slightly amended version of recommended...? Okay, so? Excuse me. Can I just suggest we slightly amend that further? Because having made that suggested amendment, the phrase in, pa in the paragraph, uh, in, 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 the, um, uh, in the brackets there, rather than waiting for next summer, becomes redundant. As soon as possible is perfectly sufficient. I'm happy okay. to also accept that amendment to the amendment. Oh, there is. I'm sorry, oh, you mean of the full street? Yeah, just remove the full. Yeah, oh, the pedestrianisation. Is that the like street park, two way working? Now, full pedestrianisation, that's what we So, we just investigate the pedestrianisation. Are you okay with that? The intention was rather to say full pedestrianisation in the sense of not part pedestrianisation or um, open for other. So I think that was not a geographical full, you know, but I, I would support that yeah. deleting the full so that it's um, not... It gives some flexibility. Yeah. So it is, if it says investigate pedestrianisation... Councillor Flynn. I'm happy to accept that third amendment to this proposal. Okay. Just to be clear, okay. um, so officers will um, investigate pedestrianisation. I'm sure there are many yeah. different options and right. those will be put into the executive member's report. And we take out rather than waiting for next summer because we've said as soon as possible. Okay, is everybody happy to accept that as the first recommendation? Okay, votes in favour? Against? 
abstentions? Thank you. Right, okay. Um, and what was the other point about other considerations? Did you say... So, Chair, it's just to say, if other members want to make a recommendation, yeah. they're, they're, they're perfectly happy to, I'm perfectly happy for them to do so, but I've only, recommendation, I've only recommended recommendation one. I would like to move, uh, move recommendation three, that in order to facilitate the possible late implement, later implementation of pedestrianisation to avoid unnecessary expenditure, that the proposed gateway treatment at the warm gate end of the street, uh, street should be either not implemented or significantly modified to take account of a possible future need for two-way traffic in that location. I have to say that seems consistent with option one, recommendation one, yes. as we've discussed it. Are members okay to, to include recommendation three? Right, okay, thank you. Okay, are we happy with that then? Do I need to take a vote on it? Or is everybody happy to accept that? Okay, so we've got Recommendation one with that with the with the amendments we've, we've just agreed, and recommendation three to be put to the executive member for his consideration at his decision session. Okay. I would try to also move recommendation five um, because I think there was also a discussion about that that there are um, different options that we might want to look into to in increase the flow across pavement into. Fosgate, so I would move recommendation five as written in the handout. Personally, I find pavement a relatively awkward road to cross, and I think I'd echo that. Um, talking about extra expenditures, zebra crossings are fairly expensive, so it may be that another route might be preferred, but it does say for example, so mm. I'd certainly be prepared to support that. How about other members? <coughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So we take it that option uh, recommendation five is also supported as is. Okay. And in which case, since we have agreement on those three recommendations, and I have no further business. I'm going to say thank you for your contributions, members, and I close the meeting. Thank you.